Hi, Year 11. I'm now going to go through with you how to complete an exercise that asks you to complete a stock card using the FIFO or first in, first out method. So I'm using the example in your textbook on page 332, exercise 5.11. All right. So the idea of FIFO is that inventory that you buy first is the first that goes out when you sell that inventory. All right. So let's read the question. From the following data, prepare a stock card using the FIFO method of costing inventories. Prepare a general journal entry to show any discrepancies found. Right. So on the 1st of October, we had 850 goods on hand at a value of $6 each. Right. So the 1st of October 2015, our balance, that's what we have on hand, was quantity 850. We had a unit cost of six dollars, and we'll multiply those together to get our total cost. Easy. Okay. Next step. On the seventh, we sold two hundred goods. So seventh of October, fifteen, we had a sale. Now, when we have a sale, we know that inventory is decreasing because it's going out of our stock. Right, we have 200. Our unit cost. Now, this is where you go if first inventory we purchased is the first to go out. So on hand, we've got 850 at $6. So this one's an easy one. You just put $6. Okay, so we multiply those together to get our total cost. Now, Unlike weighted average costing where you could just click and drag, this one we will have to do it line by line. So our quantity will be the 850 minus the two, oops, minus the 200, so 850 minus 200. <coughs> Unit cost is still $6. So you can just pop that in or you can take the one above, whatever you like. Uh, so $6 multiplied by the 650 gives us 3,900 total cost. On the 9th <coughs> of October, we purchased 400 goods at $6 each. So we'll purchase in there. It's coming in. We have 400 goods at $6. Oops, equals 400 times by 6. Now, because what we have on hand we paid $6 for, and what we've just purchased we paid $6 for, we can lump those together. So even though we haven't um, even though we haven't sold it, we haven't bought it at the same time, because they're the same price, we're just going to record it the same. $6. That one times On the 11th of October, we had we returned 50 goods bought on the 9th of October to the supplier. So this is a purchase return because we're returning the goods that we purchased, which means that they're going out of our inventories. So it's 50 goods. <coughs> we're going to use. $6 because that's all we've got. See the price we've used. And then obviously our quantity that we have is going to be equal to C minus that. $6. Technically, you can click and drag this one at the moment. So $6,000, 1000 by 6. <clears throat> Fairly straightforward. Okay, on the 15th, we sold 500 goods. Sales. So it's going out, 500 goods at $6. Checking 500 times 6. Again, 1000 minus the 500. $6. $6. On the 18th, we sold another 450 goods. 450, 6. Make sure when you do this in your exam that you do put in formulas. 
because that's part of the mark. So you want to make sure that you're doing this correctly. So 500 minus the 450, 250, six dollars equals 50 multiplied by six dollars. On the 20th, we had 70 goods sold that were sold on the 18th were returned. So we look back to the 18th, so we sold 450 at $6. <clears throat> They've now returned them to us. So this is a sales return, which goes in our in. So they return to us and back in our stock. So we have 70 goods. We will use six dollars from the 18th um, as our unit cost. We we'll multiply those together. Okay, so equals the 50 plus those ones coming back in. Still six dollars, which gives us 120 by six dollars. Okay. On the 25th of over. Oops. Okay. We purchased 600 goods. So it's purchase coming in, so 600 goods. But here's the tricky bit: we purchased them at seven dollars each, rather than what we have so far, which is six dollars. So what we need to do over in our total units on hand is separate out the six dollar units and our new $7 units. So essentially what's going to happen is you're going to take up uh, two rows. So if I go back to my home and to my borders, what I'm going to do to make that really clear is put borders on either side. Oops. Just on the bottom, the top and the bottom. So that's really hard to make. Now you don't have to use double lines, but I just find that that one's a good one because it makes them really stand out. Okay, so I've put borders in it. So now, what we're going to have is our 120 at six dollars from above. So all I've done there is I've copied this one into this new line. Okay, so on the 25th we had 120 units at six dollars. We also now have 600 units. Seven dollars. The formula in my form. Okay, I don't know how to do that now. Okay. <coughs> so when we come to sell some units, we would be selling the the one twenty first, and then the six hundred. That's the whole idea of first in, first out. Right. Twenty eighth. Again, we bought, purchased some goods. Purchased. We purchased 500 at eight dollars. So we've got another new price. Oops. At eight dollars. <coughs> so essentially, what we're going to see now is we're going to take up three lines because we've got to keep these all separate. So if I go back to my double lines and just put that in. Now what you can do is copy and paste this. If you want to paste without formatting, right. Right click and just click this values, so the one that's got numbers. What that means is it's not going to put in that double line down the bottom there in here. Okay. So we've got our first 120 at $6, the second lot we purchased 600 at $7, and then in here we're going to put in our 500 purchased at $8. Okay. <coughs> So now we've got them all separated out, so it's really clear how much we paid for each group. Right. Now on the 30th, we've sold 1,000 items, so it's the sales, they're going out. So the way we do this is we're going to sell the first ones in first. So we'll sell the 120 at $6. Then we'll sell the 600 at seven dollars. Now we sold a thousand in total. So what we're going to do is say equals one thousand minus the 120 
minus is 600, which means there's still 280 left at $8, which we believe to solve. So we'll put in a little formula for each of those. And we'll open it and closed. Now, in our total units on hand, we've sold that all that 120, we've sold the 600, all we've got left is the ones that were $8 each. So what we'll do is we'll say 500 minus the 280 we've sold, so it's 220 at $8. So that's all we should have left on hand. And again, we'll draw a line on the there just to make it really clear what we're doing. On the 31st, a physical stock take was conducted. This physical stock take revealed a surplus of five units. So what's that, what that's saying is that we had a record of 220. So over here, we're, our records show that we have 220, but we've actually got an extra five. So we've actually got 225. So in here, we'll put our inventory adjustment. <laughs> and recording in the in column we'll have five now the question is what price do we put these at we'll put them at our latest one there well the only one we've got so we'll be at eight dollars which is five eight so now we'll have 220 plus the five at eight dollars which gives us 55 times by 8, $1,800 total cost. Just when you think you're finished, you need to do your journal. So in here, we're going to do our journal. So this is our general journal. On the 31st of the 10th, what we're going to do is increase our inventory asset by five units, which is $40 worth. So inventory control, we're going to debit it. So when an asset's increasing, we debit, which will be the $40. And we'll decrease our inventory adjustment account for 40. So have it's equal to credits, generation, adjustment to agree to stock take balances. Easy as that. And that's the end of the question. So in your exam, you're asked to do a FIFO method um, stock card. This is how you set it out. So you never join together uh, units that have different unit costs. So always separate them out and you'll have big gaps like this. Cool. Done. So that was exercise 5.11 in the textbook on page 332.